Today, um, I'm going to go through just a quick little bit of bait preparation. Tomorrow, I'm going to be filming, um, doing a um, bread feeder. It's something I really like to do in the, the winter. So it's going to be uh, fishing like a, a, a small round cage feeder, not too heavy, with um, a bread paste in it. It's not completely, you know, squashy, super wet paste. It's really light and fluffy, so when it hits the water, it just explodes. There's nothing to really fill the... The fish up just more of an attraction, and then I'm just going to fish um, double maggot or single maggot, depending on um, how how it goes and, and what stamp of fish are about. I'm going to just go quickly through the bait preparation first, and then I've got obviously I've, I've, a lot of these films that I do I film on my own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go through the rig uh, close up, and you get to see it a bit easier than if I were doing it you know, out there because obviously I can't zoom the camera in and out so what I'll do is I'll go, I'll run through that rig and this will be up, you know, towards the back end of this week or next week and we'll put that up before the main video so at least you can see the rig before the main video goes up so what we'll do is any sort of soft uh, fresh is best for, uh, for this certain method of white bread is best I mean this is just a, an own brand but I mean you don't really need to, for this part, you don't really need to spend a lot of money on it because we're just going to blend it up really. But it needs to be fresh for this. You can obviously you can dry out bread and you know it makes great additives to your ground bait to give the aeration, you know, and, and brilliant for bream and roach fishing and silvers. But what we're going to do is we want it soft so we, we get an explosion, it's really fluffy and really light. Um, and obviously, tomorrow when I mix it up and I do the actual video, I'll show you that when it's mixed and you, you'll, you'll able to see what I'm on about so all you need is just basically a simple food press, uh, processor with, with just a blade in it it can be one of the tall ones whatever if you're going to do the tall ones just do it bit by bit what I tend to do is try to pull it off in sort of like little chunks like that uh, mainly is because it, bl it blends up a, li a little bit easier in, rather than putting it in like a big massive slab of bread so do them bit by bit obviously because you can get everything in Sorry, this is going to be a bit loud. Obviously, we'll try and edit the sound. Right, it's completely blended now. Cup took a couple of seconds. Want it really blended well, and we don't want any big lumps and chunks in it. Obviously, for the, for the purpose of the video, I'm not going to blend the whole loaf. I'll just show you what I need to show you. So, just have a little tub at side. So, if you can see there, all that is blended into lovely soft particles. It's almost, but with it being fresh, you can almost squeeze it, and it, you know, and it's it's holding together in in large chunks. You know, so it's so like squeeze together, but it'll still break up. And tomorrow, when when it's mixed with that water, it, it's just gonna explode out of that feeder, and obviously give us the attraction that we're that we're hoping to uh, desire. So while I'm doing that, I'm just gonna go through. Um, there's another bait what I do prep, and I know a lot of you canal guys do it, and a lot of you uh, guy, uh, match guys do it for dobbing and stuff like that. But just for people that don't know, obviously I will be fishing maggot, but I always take. Uh, rolled out bread ready to punch um, just as an, an extra if especially if I'm fishing with bread it's always good to take with you because you know sometimes there'll be some carp knocking about and we can we can have them on that on you know just depending on what size punch you use because you use small punches or bigger punch so what we're going to do is I'll bring camera closer and I'll show you how I would prep that Right guys, I know you can't see me but you can you can all see the bread so all I've done is to be fair the best um, bread without saying the manufacturer's name but it's got toasty wrote after it is the best bread to do it you spout a pound a loaf but you know so as long as it's fresh white bread it, you know it does work but the toasty is the best um, so all I've done is cut the crusts off it now you need a rolling pin or just a cling film like I've got here I can't find my rolling pin and all you're doing is just putting it on top and just rolling it out you could do this day before like I'm doing now 
and all you're going to do is just pack it in, it packet it into um, a sandwich bag for the day, the day before. I really do press hard because what happens is when it it goes into the water, once you punched it with a either a pellet punch or a, a bread punch, obviously it's better, which you can get from tackle shops, you know, cheapest chips. What it is, it's really dense now and really, you know, quite firm. So what will happen is you'll punch it and it hooks really well. And then what will happen is when you get in the water, it'll start to swell up. Now a lot of the guys, when they fish the matches and stuff, what they'll do is they'll they'll do six maybe six punches, take them all out, get a baiting needle and put them on a hair rig for cat for dobbing or for for on, on the bomb, and and they swell up really nice. And especially if you use the toasty, which I haven't got with me today, but that's basically it. So all you would do now is just punch those out and put them onto your hook. So what I'm going to do now is just go into the other room and I've, I'll set the camera up and I'll just do a little bit of uh, showing you the rig uh, that we're going to fish with tomorrow just so it's in a bit more detail and you can see from a bit more close up. Right guys, so I've just got the uh, the rig on this uh, piece of cardboard to make it um, show up. Hopefully you can you can see it with a, with a new camera. So it really couldn't be simpler. What I've got is just a 15 gram, depending on this, all depends on the, the sort of distance that you're casting. If you're fishing rivers or you're fishing, you know, a longer chuck uh, to a feature or anything like that, then yeah, or it's windy or there's a bit of tow on, then obviously up your feeders up to a, a 15 grammer, uh, from a 15 grammer to like a 30, uh, or even, you know, up to 45, 50 if you're, if you're fishing rivers at this time of year. So, what I've got is I've got some uh, four pound Daiwa Senza line and um, that's just running straight through the top there and if you can see that running straight through the top of the eye of the top and then that basically runs straight down to behind it just to get that there is a number one shot and what I've, the reason I've got this number one shot just there the camera can see it is just so then that that feeder can just butt up against it and it, it allows you to when you're unhooking fish or when you're around the net uh, you know your feeder will just slide out your way you've got a clear rig and you know you're safe and there's nothing there I also put it about an inch away from my uh, quick change bead the reason I do this is it just I think I feel for me it just protects it it protects your, your, your quick stop bead it's not getting a lot of hammer and you know it's right at the end of your where your loop is and you know you don't want it to get it to be smashing against there um, and it has no effect on fish whatsoever because obviously if the bead's gonna <laughs> if, if anything's gonna anything's gonna scare them away it's gonna be the bead so that's not an issue so that, that basically butts up like that and that's how how it would be when you were casting it out and when it hits the water so onto that I've just made a, a hook length a hook length and not gonna be able to see it against this white background um, of O um, 13 it is so it's about well it's not O it's about O 10 to be honest so it's a probably you know about three pound maybe just a bit less and onto that I've got a size 18 um, maggot hook and that's just a Drennan hook which is about there so basically that's it really and that's I would say that's a good 10 inches probably from fingers to fingers. Uh, roughly 10 inches away and obviously if you're, uh, you're finding that um, you, your fish are, are getting hooked um, in the top lip then you know that they're following that bait down but if, they ca if you're getting hooked in that bottom lip then you know it's, um, it's a good indication that they're, they're taking it on the drop so you, you know you might want a, a longer hook link um, and if you're getting plenty of liners um, and you're not really getting many many bites and you seem to be missing um, bites and you need to shot on your hook link because obviously they're, they're knocking against the feeder but you shouldn't really get that issue with this um, method uh, as you know it quickly releases its contents to the feeder with uh, with this bread so obviously um, I'll be putting the video up soon so um, obviously give it a try and uh, hope this has been helpful and thank you in tight lines